everyone, I'm here today to talk to you about some things that I've been loving recently. Anything I can link, I'll link in the description box down below. Firstly, let's start with the obvious one. It's autumn, it makes me happy, and I don't care if that means that I'm basic. <laughs> so this is my favourite time of year. Mr M and I really like to get out of London at the weekends when we can. Not for the whole weekend, but for a day trip. We use um, a website, which I think is called the Walking Club, which has a list of walks that you can get to outside of London via train, and it's a really great resource. I think they also organise group walks that you can join if you want to, but we just use all the walks that they have and then we go on them ourselves on our own. Um, so one that we did recently, which is one of our favourites, and I've probably spoken about it in a favourites last year or the year before, but it's a walk from, is it Milford to Thursday and then on to Hazelmere and there's a really lovely pub in Thursley called the Three Horseshoes which we stopped at for lunch. It's near the Devil's Punch Bowl in Sussex so you walk along that too. It's really beautiful. I actually have that walk in a long reading vlog that I'm filming at the moment so I'll insert a tiny bit of that here um, but the whole thing will be in another video soon. I absolutely love it. If you're in London, you want to escape, check out that website linked down below. Speaking of autumn, my favourite autumn candle of choice, which I don't think I've mentioned in a favourites video, even though I got it a while ago. This is pumpkin spice with hints of vanilla nutmeg, brown sugar and cinnamon. It's from TK Maxx. It's by DW Home, I think. Is it? Yes, because pretty much all of my candles are from them. It is delicious. And also I picked up this, don't judge me, because it is technically a Christmas candle, but I didn't buy it because of its Christmassiness. I bought it because it's a pine candle and I love the smell of pine trees and it makes me think of forest walks, which makes me think of autumn. So I'm not getting ahead of myself, I promise, but it smells great. And even though it's really small, it really scents the room, which is great, does its job. Excellent work. I picked this up in Brighton, actually. Jean and I took a day off work and we went to Brighton for the day. And when we were in Brighton, we went to HomeSense and we went to the mothership, which is Lucy and Yak. As you probably are aware, I love Lucy and Yak quite a lot. Mostly they make dungarees, but they brought out some other things recently. And I picked up a fleece. I'd had my eye on it on their website since it came out. It looks like this, and what I love about this is that it's cropped. So, Mr. M and I go hiking quite a lot, and I have a fleece, it's a purple fleece that I picked up in a walking shop for £10 in the sale. It does its job, but I don't wear it when I'm not hiking because I just, I don't like it that much, but it works for hiking. So I thought I would pick this up and have this alongside the fleece that I wear for hiking, and I can wear this in everyday life, but also wear it when uh, I'm out hiking as well. And the, even though it's cropped, it does have a toggle, which means that you can cinch it in and then no air can, you know, get up so that you stay all warm. And my walking trousers are high-waisted anyway. So yeah, I really like this. And it's made from recycled plastic bottles, which is fantastic. And I also bought these, which are their, um, their Alexa trousers. And they are the most comfortable trousers in the history of the world. So they stretch. A lot so you can eat as much food as you like um, and then um, they look like this it's quite hard to show I'll insert a picture where I'm wearing them but they are super 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 comfortable uh, and I'll link both those down below Luciniac are a ethical sustainable company and I think that they are brilliant Brighton is the only place where they have a shop but I'm sure that they will be opening more at some point but all of their products are online as well a board game that Mr M and I have been playing is this which is Pandemic Legacy. We had never played Pandemic before, and I think a lot of people have played Pandemic. It's a collaborative game where you're trying to stop the spread of disease throughout the world. Pandemic Legacy is essentially that, but it's a, there are 24 rounds, but if you do well, there are only 12. So you basically, there are, it's, a, it's set over a whole year and you have two goes at each month. If you fail the first time, you can try again. So, uh, so far we have passed each month, but the game basically mutates as you go. New rules are added, there are boxes for you to open, there are new diseases, there are, you know, certain diseases become incurable, zombies come into the mix at one point. It's so exciting and intricate and you just don't know what's gonna happen next. 
and it means that you really have to be on your toes because the stakes are high because you can lose this game if you lose a whole month that's it you're gone and you can't play the game anymore it is an investment this game was i think 70 pounds we bought it in edinburgh and took it to the isle of arran with us when um we were up there and we didn't actually start it there we just started doing practice rounds because as i said we never played pandemic before and we didn't want to leap into this game when we paid so much money for it and maybe fail. So this is going to be something that's going to keep us busy for a really long time. If you are in the mood for an investment board game, you have to play, I would say, with the same people each time. So we have to play it with ourselves. We can't play it with other people because, as I said, you have to stick with it and it grows, it grows with you. Um, but it is so exciting. If you've been thinking about it, I recommend it. So many people messaged me about it on Instagram when I said we bought it, saying that they had loved it. Um, so yeah, it comes very highly recommended. In fact, when we were in Blackwells in Edinburgh, which is where we bought it, we were umming and ahhing about it, and then someone came up to us and said it was the best game experience they'd ever had, so we decided that we would buy it. And they didn't work there, so um, it was a unbiased recommendation. The next thing that I wanted to recommend is these, and unfortunately, oh, sorry, I've got an itchy nose. It's quite a niche recommendation because you can only get these if you're in London, but I'm really hoping that they expand and they do them elsewhere. I didn't realize that the body shop used to do this, but I think when they first opened, they had refill stations, and then for some reason, they got rid of them. Now they've brought them back to their Bond Street store. So I was really excited about that and I went down. At the moment they're only doing it for shower gel. I'm really hoping that they do it for body lotion, for conditioners, etc. So you go and you purchase these and the first time that you buy it's six pounds, which is the same price as if you bought their plastic container and whenever you refill it's four pounds, so it ends up being cheaper. So I got a Juicy Pear one and a British Rose. I decided to get two so that I didn't have to go back all the time to get them refilled. But I'm really, really loving this. And to make them last longer, I'm also alternating between using these and then using this, which is the Snow Fairy Naked Body Bar. Is that what it's called? It's, it's Naked Shower Gel, and now I've touched it, and now my, my hand is sticky, from Lush, which smells great, and I keep it in this bowl because obviously it's very, very slippery. Um, EEC syndrome, the, the condition that I have is a form of exodermal dysplasia, and you might be able to tell by the beginning of that name that it affects the skin. So my skin is really, really thick, and it gets dry and irritated, so I don't get on with soap that much. The amount that I have to moisturize is a whole other level, which is why I really hope the Body Shop do bring out refillable body lotions. Um, so at the moment, I am alternating between using these refill shower gels and the Lush Naked Shower Gel Soap thing. Um, and if you have any recommendations for nourishing soaps for sensitive skin that don't come in packaging, then do let me know. Jean has recommended I check out the Honey Soap that Lush do, so I think I may go there next. Um, what else? Oh, linking in with walks and loving autumn. I've been very much enjoying Instagram recently, so if you like autumn and you don't follow me over there, then, then go, go and follow if you would like to. I'll link it in the description box down below. Um, another lovely thing is that my poetry collection, The Girl Aquarium, has been shortlisted for this year's Books on My Bag Poetry Award. It's a category in their Readers Award which are nominated by booksellers. So the shortlist are picked by booksellers, the winners are picked by readers. So if you read the book and enjoyed it and would like to vote for it, I will link it in the description box down below. You have to be in the UK to vote, I'm afraid, but if you do vote, you could win £100 worth of book tokens, which is rather cool. If you haven't read The Girl Aquarium and you would like to pick up a copy, that would make my heart very, very happy indeed. I will link sample poems in the description box down below. Basically, if you like fairy tales, if you want to learn about the history of the freak show, if you like the sea, if you like forests, then I hope that you will enjoy the voices in this collection. And I loved writing it very, very much indeed. I think I have a couple more recommendations. And um, this is the new Jamie Oliver cookbook. This is Veg. And um, we've been trying a few things from this. We made the casserole. I'll insert a picture of the casserole here, which had loads of vegetables inside and was really, really great. And we made the rough aubergine lasagna, which I really enjoyed making too. That, In fact, 
you know how it is sometimes with cookbooks you flick through them and you think okay I would like to make maybe a third of the things in here but I would say most of the things if not all of the things in here are things that I want to make so we'll be making more of these over the winter months and I know that many of you have been asking me to make more cooking videos where I talk about books so I might do some recipes from here when I do that. What else is on my list? Dairy Girls. We watch Dairy Girls very late to the game but that has made us laugh a lot so if you haven't seen that I'll link the trailer down below and we also have been watching the new series of RuPaul's Drag Race UK. Um, I'm not loving it as much as the American series but I'm hoping it's just getting warmed up and then it's going to get really great. I really want them to start making costumes and I think they may be doing that this week so fingers crossed and my final favorite if you can hear me over the rain is that we went to Columbia Road flower market at the weekend and we picked up some houseplant children um am I going to pick them up and show you okay I will do that I'm going to move this candle first though so that I don't set my dungarees on fire because I don't think that would be a fun thing to do firstly I got these flowers so these aren't house plants obviously but these are called protea I think and they are really really beautiful and apparently they last for a very long time which is cool. Also, let me reach over here. We got these two little dudes. This is a mistletoe cactus and we've called him Hagrid. And this is a donkey tail plant and we have called him Ed. I think Hagrid in particular is, is very well named. The final plant that we got is this little ivy here who we called Holly. So our houseplant family has grown quite a lot. We have several spider plants too, all of which stemmed from one spider plant, which was a gift for our wedding from Jean, who we called Anastasia. So we have two grown up spider plants that she birthed called Anya and Dimitri, and we have given lots of spider plant children to, to many people that we know. If you need a spider plant baby then, I am your person. I think that's everything that I wanted to mention. As I said, everything I can link, I'll link in the description box. What have you been loving recently? Let me know in a comment because I would love to know. I hope you guys have a great week and I'll speak to you really soon. Lots of bookish love. Bye.